This is a magnolia tree that's used for the uh, bud remedy, the little magnolia bud that comes out before any of the leaves. And what's that called? Students help me out. What's that medicine called? Something hua. Okay. Um, if, if your seed is big enough that you can actually rub it across the sandpaper, that's, that's the preferred method. Just scratch it a little bit. So, I'm sorry, what grit of sandpaper is that? This is heavy, um, but I've used medium yeah. before. Mm -hmm. So here's our little jar of magnolia seeds, and we have uh, four of them that have fallen to the bottom. That, you know, does, uh, one is kind of hanging there. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll put it around like that. <clears throat> the, um, so the size of the seed, if you have a large seed, it's going to help a lot to scarify it because in, in very big seed, you can actually scratch it with a knife or a razor blade. Um, but it, it, the sandpaper method, um, alternatively, tumbling it with coarse, coarse grit or something would work. Um, anything you can do to scratch that seed coat in an efficient way. I have here the um, trichosanthes, the cucumber family plant. And in this one, I scarified it and they're not dropping to the bottom, which I don't know what that means. I'm not discouraged. Um, but this batch of seed, it doesn't have the yellow pulp rubbed off enough. So before we plant them, I want to get rid of that yellow pulp. Um, that probably is, is going to have a tendency to rot in the, in the pot, and we want to avoid that. The cucumber family in general needs a lot of heat. It needs 70 to 80 degree temperatures in order to germinate. Now, that means the temperature of the soil, not necessarily the temperature of the air. So I know a, a farmer in central New York who has uh, an old barn fitted up with um, tables like these um, in which he's got about six inches of sand and he's got a rubber hose running through. He heats, um, fires up a wood stove, heats the water. The water runs through the sand, heats the sand. The pots rest on the surface of the sand and that's sufficient for all of his germinations. The fact that the barn itself is unheated during the winter so that the outside temperatures could get below freezing is irrelevant. The fact that the sand is warm enough is sufficient for germination. And this is the principle also of the solar greenhouses they're building these days where they have hot water piping under the soil at the bottom. So um, remember that, that you don't have to be putting these um, little dino pots that we're making um, into a hot room. You just have to make sure that somehow they have bottom heat. The minute germination occurs, and I mean, that several of them germinate. Um, you want to take it off the heat, bottom heat and put it into artificial light. Remember, the Dino pots cannot go into direct sunlight, so what we want is bright indirect, including uh, fluorescence. They work re really well under fluorescence. After the seed germinates, the need is for light. So prior to germination, the need is for heat, in many cases, although variable temperatures range, uh, ranging, uh, alternating perhaps from 70 to 40, is going to break dormancy. And Dr. Dino uh, discusses this in his, um, in his manual. So he'll tell you for certain genera, you want to start it at 70 uh, for, for a month, uh, put it at 40 for three months, and bring it back to 70, something like that because he's figured out that alternating temperatures are the thing uh, that's going to make the plant break dormancy. But in general, if bottom heat is required for germination, after germination, 
the big need is for light because light is going to stimulate root growth and that's what you want out of a seedling. Your, um, <coughs> your area can be <coughs> down to 40 degrees. Um, I wouldn't go down to 35. I'd you know, try to stay in the high 30s or 40. Um, but I had uh, a cold cellar where, with a fluorescent light fixture set up uh, that worked really, really well for these germinations. So uh, the more light you can get on them, the better. And um, I start my germinations usually in January, February, and I set my timer on my lights to go on and off, but I set it on a 12-hour cycle. So it's really getting 12 hours of light, even in the dead of winter. Yeah. Are you giving it, I mean, if you're using fluorescent, you're not controlling whether it's getting more red light or blue light. I know no, but people are doing that. Okay. There's a guy working with NASA who's experimenting with wavelengths. Yeah, because I know from some of my studies here that there's different wavelengths that yeah. trigger different kinds of growth. Right. Um, if you're making a um, fluorescent um, rack with, with a, fluorescent, a fluorescent fixture, you get what's known in the um, construction trade as a shop light. It's called a shop light. It's a rectangular unit, four feet long. Um, yeah, something like that, although the ones I've seen are, um, they're not as nice as that. <laughs> Those are um, where the, the, yeah, the bare fluorescents are hanging out. And then what you can do is try to buy um, a pink tinted fluorescent and a blue tinted fluorescent for each. You know, there, it's usually two four foot fluorescent bulbs for each unit. And if you buy one of each color, um, it saves money. You don't have to buy the expensive horticultural bulbs. Um, just buying a red tint and a blue tint will give you enough of a spectrum so the plants will be happy. So you can do this very cheaply. You can um, build a rack for around $50 a unit like that. Uh, let's see, what else? What kind of light cycle or how much time usually do you leave the light on? Well, I um, during the winter, I, I give 12 hours because I, yeah. Um, some people might say that they would leave the light continu on continuously, but I don't think so. I do want to sort of approximate nature. Yeah. But I'm conscious that it's only for fluorescent light, so I don't want to um, go down to however much light we have in January, which is only what, you know, less than 12 hours. Yeah. So I want to be sure there's a good 12 hours and then it, it clicks off overnight and comes on again in the morning. Um, and as I said before, the, uh, usually the perennials are very slow growing. After they germinate, uh, they take quite a long time and some of them are, remain fragile. So that if you try uh, too early to transplant the seedlings, you're going to have failure. You have to keep many of these things for months in the little Dino pot. And I have kept them for three years before I throw them out. Three and four years. Because occasionally you get surprised and there's a Very long cycle in there and the little Dino pot is keeping it moist enough so that three, four years later it comes up. It's pretty amazing. So uh, 